What's up my people and welcome to another video in Walrus Code. Today I'm gonna see a little introduction to continuous integration. Yes guys, these are pipelines that automatize the testing and building of Docker images for our features or for our code generally. So a uh, typical continuous integration pipelines looks more or less like this. We have a developer which uh, created a feature branch or a fix and uh, for this purpose, he created or she created a pull request to GitHub. We can set a webhook to our agent. An agent, we are going to call our agent the code build agent. But if you come from the Jenkins world, code build is just an alternative to Jenkins built from AWS and it is managed also from AWS. But an agent is gonna be basically a server that can run scripts, build Docker images, run unit tests, pretty much everything that a, what a developer can do, but it is automatized. So uh, an agent basically can run batch scripts and do many, many things, whatever we want. So the GitHub, when it detects, as, as soon as it detects someone created a pull request, it says, okay, we have to notice our agent, to notify, I mean, our agent, so-called build, sees, okay, I have a new feature branch, I have to run test against it, unit test, to check if, it, if the code doesn't have any bug, and if the tests are green, then the code build will finally build our image. It doesn't have necessary to be an image, our last a product artifact. It can also be a jar if you are using plain Java with jars uh, artifacts or an NPM package. It can be the output can be anything. In this example, we are building a Docker image as our ex, uh, output, and we are pushing our image to the Elastic Container Registry or the ECR, which is the image registry image yeah image registry of AWS but you could also use docker hub if you want so that's pretty much it this is a very simple continuous integration pipeline you can have much more complicated one but but as an introduction this covers pretty much the main aspects of a continuous delivery pipeline a continuous integration don't confuse this this topic with continuous delivery which is another story and i think that has there is so much to talk about it that i'm not covering continuous delivery in this video this video is purely purely about continuous integration so what is code build then it is an agent but how what are their primary elements let's head to it so first what is code build i have a, opened here the um, documentation of aws and it is based on a. Um, I th I saw a very good definition. Let me th uh, search for it. OS operating system concepts. But because it says that code build is based on an operating system and a um, and a Docker image, the code build environment. Okay, whatever. So I'm gonna explain it with my own words then. So code build is basically a server which runs an operating system based on an image. So you can choose one of these images, which I am showing right now. You can choose Amazon Linux 2 with different versions and for different architectures, for example, for x86 or for ARM, if I'm not wrong. Yes, that is ARM, I think, yeah. And also you have Ubuntu and you can also use Windows images. That is uh, fairly new, I think. Or I, I'm not sure, but you can also now have a agents based on Windows images, which is amazing, I think. And I think you could also have Mac OS images, but I'm not sure why isn't it listed here. Or maybe it is a future feature. So this agent can execute the scripts but how do we give it how do we give instructions to the agent running here and this is do, done through a yaml file which has this format so i'm looking here at the documentation of aws code build the build spec syntax so this yaml file 
name is build spec and it must be at the root of the project just as the Jenkins file must be at the root of the project or normally it has to be at the root of the project so for example in this example in this example there is a developer that pushes a code to the github this github repository must have the build spec at the root of the project and this is the project example that we are going to see today and it's, uh, as you can see here at the root of the files there is a build spec yaml this is the file that our agent in aws code build is going to execute so let's head to it let's look look at this and my example is very small in this for this purpose but I only use two faces so we are gonna see that there are many faces you can define in this YAML file for example there is faces install oh okay <laughs> it jumped to other place I think okay we are here I'm not gonna click <laughs> So faces, we have the install phase, we can define commands. These commands can be batch commands, shell commands. Imagine that this you are here in the console of the agent and if the agent has one of these images, for example, a Ubuntu image, then you can just run any command that you can run in a Ubuntu console, like for example, ls, echo, whatever. You can use whatever you want. So uh, where was I? here so faces install pre-build build and you can choose if you want to abort the entire script if you have a failure if you, or you can you could also define continue if you can uh, jump between the stages with failures that is up to you but in my example I just used build and post build I didn't need the other ones but you could also choose the other ones if you want and what else I used Oh, I used the install phase. I didn't, I forgot it because I have to install the runtime Coreto 11. Do you know what it's, what is that? That is a Java version of, of the GDK. That is a Java GDK, JDK implementation, but it's basically Java uh, 11. So with Java 11, I can build my project, which is uh, a Spring Boot application. So we are containerizing a Spring Boot application. So basically a jar file of, and we use gra Gradle. But look at this. There is more complexity added to this because I use a batch uh, command in order to execute a shell script, uh, a batch script basically. And this is also at the root of the project, but it is here. So. I can execute this kind of scripts also from my agent, running in my agent. This is uh, not complicated the script at all. It looks uh, maybe batch looks a little intimidating always at the first glance, but you can look at the stages. It's just building a YAR file out of the YAR files, and then we push the image to the Docker registry, and that's it. But there, uh, there is a very interesting feature here. I can differentiate, uh, make a difference between pull requests that are created and pull requests that are merged because there are, there are two actions that a developer can do. And based on these two actions, we can build two kinds of images here. One image is gonna be a feature image that is not gonna be a main, uh, the final uh, production image. I mean, whenever you create a pull request, you create a feature image because you want to test this image somewhere in your de testing environment, for example. But whenever you merge a pull request against main, that means your feature was approved and you are ready to put it in production, then you merge a pull request, then you're gonna build a production image. And what is the difference? The difference is very subtle. Uh, subtle, subtle, a subtle difference. You are going to tag your image differently. So if your image is a production image, you tag it with latest, for example, because that is the latest images you want available for your clients. And if it is a feature image, you don't want to tag it as, as latest because that is 
that branch is not ready for production, then you have to use the name of the branch for, that is just an example. You can use the name of the branch as a tag for this image or whatever name you want. That is up to you actually. But yes, that is uh, important logic and you can do it well, however you want. You can tag it not with latest, but with a fixed version, for example, B11, B20, whatever you want. So yeah, that is what I wanted to show you, but that is not everything I wanted to show you now. How does it look code built in the real console? So let's go to our AWS. That is my AWS console account. And this is the project I have. First, if you have never been here in this view, you have here the entire code pipeline stages. I mean, you can deploy, you can build, you can product artifacts and source. This is code commit. That is the alternative to GitHub or to GitLab, but you can integrate with GitHub without any problems. So if you don't like code commit, I don't like the UI of code commit. It looks, it looks like not so friendly, I would say. You can use safely any other repository out there that can be integrated with code build, which I, I don't know if you can integrate any others. If you know if you can integrate GitLab or Bitbucket, please write it down in the commentaries. But okay, we are gonna talk about code build today. So let's go to the build project. We are, I do have three code build projects, but this is the one I will show you today. And as you can see here, you can check uh, view. With, um, you can see which is the primary repository which we are attached to. This is the primary repository and you can see every, this is the historic view of the builds I have run in the past hours or in the last couple of days. You can see if it failed or if it succeeded. So let's trigger a build. I think it is now time to trigger a build. So this is the code source. I'm just gonna check that I am in main. So let's create a branch test branch and now I'm gonna do a modification in the um, readme because I don't want to mess things up so I'm just gonna add something very dumb here but hi I am a modification okay now I can check the the difference and I think okay I'm gonna commit this thing with a just a foobar commit <laughs> and now I can push this to the um, repository okay I'm gonna copy this command and now that I have pushed this to the repository I can go and create a pull request because we want to trigger a build right so let's let's create a pull, uh, pull request and see what happens so I expect that cold build reads this trigger somehow with the webhook I did. And now I can refresh refresh here this view and we can see now we have one build in progress and we can see the output of this code build agent because it is an agent It's like imagine that is like a robot running commands the one we specified in the repository so we can check the output. Let's go to the process and we can attach to the console actually. Let's refresh, I think it's a little, my connection, okay. So it ran pretty fast, I guess, but oh, it is already running, but it is not uh, finished yet. But you can see now it is starting uh, the Gradle, Gradle daemon because it uses Gradle to build the packages and to produce the output, the final jar, and then we are in the stage build so to say let's head again to the build spec and let's review it so we are in this batch build image script so we are in the build stage it already installed java so let's go to this and now it's running gradle yes but okay let's look at the past okay now the build is already done 
So this this takes just like a couple of seconds, a couple of uh, seconds, I mean, and now it's building the image, but it first downloaded the base image, which is this one. It is the Slim, JRE Slim Java 11, pretty easy. And then it pushed already to the cloud, to the ECR. And that's it. It was a success. And I can, I can close this window, but I wanted to explain something that I remembered now. So let's go. To, so let's go to our build image script. I wanted to explain something very important. We have to log in to our Docker registry in ECR. That's why we have here somewhere this command. We have to do an AWS ECR public uh, get login password D and it is piped with a second command because the result of this command outputs a token which we are using as um, input to this one to docker login. We use this because we have to get authorized from AWS to push and to download images so actually this one is for permission for pushing, but I do have another login here. This is another login to, in order to get permission from a private repository I have in the ECR in order to download the, the base image because my base image is in a, my private repository from ECR and the agent must have permissions. How do we grant permissions to this agent in order to pull from this one? Actually, it is going to pull to build the whole image and then to push again. We have to grant it permissions. Uh, you, we, we could use, I think, credentials, like hard-coded credentials. I'm not sure, maybe that would work. Safer to just use a login like this one. So I use a login for the private repository and then I log in for the public repository to twice. And so I do have great permissions, but there is another thing that we have to grant to the agent, to this agent in order to have permissions. But this has to do now with the IAM roles. This agent must have a policies in its service role in order to be able to push and to pull from the Elastic Container Registry because those two are AWS managers services, we have to deal with the IAM roles. And how do we do this? First, I'm gonna show you right now that we do have a service role for this code build and it is here in build details. Uh, do you see here in environment, there is a service role, let's open this. And now I am in the IAM console and I'm going to see this role and the policies. And here you're going to see that I had to grant this policy to this um, service role in order to be able to access the ECR projects. And I think it is here. Yes, here. So this action, this is very important. I have granted uh, permissions for the ECR public batch check layers and complete layer and get authorization token and uh, so on. And also for the private, the private is just ECR and I can get images from the private repository, get authorization token and so on. And the STS is also important to get the, the token. The, those are like temporary credentials that enable these whoever assumes this role to get credentials in order to log into the ECR. So these permissions were very important. Without these ones, the, our agent cannot actually push or pull from the ECR. And that's it, basically. I think that's all I wanted to explain to you today. This is an introduction to code build I recommend you, if you want to learn this same thing I did today, just go to the documentation of code build, learn, a, learn about this YAML file, experiment. You have to experiment to build, to, you're gonna fail maybe, but that's okay. You can look up the documentation and you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn a lot if you do things by yourself, if you get your hands dirty with this. Um, what else do I wanted to say? To say, yeah, that's it. Oh, one last thing I wanted to tell you: How did I integrate GitHub? How did 
did I do this webhook? And it is done here in source. I had to get my credentials. So I had to get GitHub credentials. Look at this. In GitHub, you can go to settings and then you go to developer settings here. And you can go to auth apps, yeah, uh, no, personal access token, I mean. And here you can create personal access tokens, which are strings, uh, pretty long strings, like like a kind of a pass, the kind of a password, I mean. And then you you're gonna you can paste this credential here, and you have to be sure that no one else is gonna access this credential because you have to put it in a, in a very safe place, or maybe just here and then forget about it. And I recommend you to put expiration time off on it. You can, when when you create the credential here, you can put an expiration time on it. It's very easy, but yes. So here you can do the integration with GitHub and then GitHub can, uh, I mean, CodeBuild can listen to the web hacks and all everything else. And this is basically just the URL to my repository. And here I defined the hooks I wanted to listen. So I defined, defined two kind of hooks, a pull request merged whenever the base uh, reference is main. So whenever I'm merging something against the main, so merging for production, I want to do run a build with the latest with my production image. And this is the listener for building uh, uh, for webhooks to build feature images. So just by creating a pull request, we are going to build an image because we assume that this is a feature that we want to test in our test environment. So we create a develop image or a feature image. And how does it look like in the repository like this? So we are now in our ECR repository where we are, we are pushing our images. So in this part of the diagram, and the latest in my case is the production. Maybe I wouldn't call it latest only, but also with a production tag. This is just an example between production in real applications. You also want to add a, like a fixed tag to every version you release to production. Otherwise you can, you wouldn't have the chance to track former images. So like these are untagged. This is a bad practice, but I, I did it just like this for the sake of the example. And this is a feature image, which I called, this is an image that is not going to be uh, immediately released to production. It is, it is just for internal use for testing purposes. Yes, guys, that was it for today. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to share the link of this video to other people that are interested in learning continuous integration, AWS services, DevOps, I don't know, SysOps administration, backend development. I talk a lot about a, li a little bit of every topic that I am learning currently now. As an AWS learner, I I'm just started this journey like a year ago, or maybe a little, no, actually two years ago, but I'm getting even um, I'm trying to get deeper and deeper in this and it is very exciting to learn how many things can you do in AWS. So see you the next week, nos vemos la próxima semana.